Namaste everyone. Welcome to my channel. Uh, this video is a special uh, Shivaratri special video. But uh, this is not only specific to Shiva worship. Like it is a timeless uh, video. It is a timeless knowledge that I am going to share with you. Just the thing is, this is specifically I am doing it for Shivaratri. That is on the 1st of March. So let's quickly start with the stuff. The first thing that I want to talk in the video or the major thing that I want to talk in the video is about mantra compatibility. And then I will illustrate this particular point using my own name, that is Subham. And along with this, we will talk a, a few things about Shiva, verse, etc. So coming, jumping straight to the point. There are many types of uh, remedies, to be very honest with you. Gemstone, donation, and all these things. Out of all of these remedies, mantra chanting is my favorite form of remedy. Why? Because all the remedies, be it donation or anything, donation, gemstones, etc. First of all, remedies like gemstones, are only focused at improving the strength of a planet. If a planet is weak, he will become strong. If the planet is already strong by wearing the gemstone, you cannot make the planet weak. And the second point is if the planet is malefic, then giving power to the planet will be further bad for you only. Remedies like donation don't work in this particular life. So if you donate things right now, most probably you will get the effect in the next life or if not in the next life, then at least after 10, 15 years, at least. Other things like uh, puja, part, anushthan, etc. is something that you cannot do by yourself. You need the help of someone, some professional pundit, ji, probably. Mantra chanting is my favorite because first of all, mantra chanting can be done by anyone, anywhere. It is something that can be done by home, by everyone. Secondarily, it is the mantra chanting which is known to be proved to change the course of karma. It is only the mantra remedy, mantra chanting remedy, which can actually change a particular result and attract beneficence and prosperity to your life. And third point is by mantra chanting, it not only serves as a remedy, but also serves as a self-improvement tool which endows the person with powers. You cannot display these powers, but certainly with the help of these powers, you can avoid bad things, negative people and negativity from your life. Now, there are many mantras. You know about it. Like there is a mantra for, for Shiva, we chant Namah Shivai, that is a five-lettered mantra, or Om Namah Shivai, that is a six-lettered mantra. There is Vishnave Namaha, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevai, you know, or there are bigger mantras, Om Ram Rama Namaha, or Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. There are many mantras out there. And out of these mantras, which mantra one should chant or which mantra will be beneficial. See, you can chant any mantra that you want. There is no restriction about it. But if the mantra is not suitable to you, the process of the chanting will be difficult. You will not be able to practice it regularly. There will be many hurdles and obstacles in the way of your uh, chanting. And then the mantra also doesn't show the result as expected or a lot of hard work needs to be put and easily the mantra doesn't fructify. The result of the mantra doesn't fructify in the life of the person who is doing it. So to avoid all of the situations and circumstances, in the texts of Tantra, there, is, there are a few methodology that is employed to check if the mantra is suitable to you or not. And when you do the suitable mantra, it works quickly, gives you the desired result. 
and other things follow. This is the main basic point. Now, before going into this part of which mantra will suit you, another aspect of the same thing is which deity one should worship. So there are many deities. Some of the deities are quick result giving and other deities don't give result that quickly. That is also according to you only as per the compatibility only. I will not say that a particular deity will not give result. That's not the case. But the result should be quick. Otherwise, if the result is delayed or it takes up a whole lot of efforts, then it will be a problem. So which deity will be suitable for you and which mantra will be suitable for you? I will both be explaining in the same thing to stay connected. And this one particular point, these famous mantras like Om Namah Shivaya or Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. These mantras are suitable to everyone basically. So there is no need to check the compatibility for these mantras. It is one opinion. However, I personally believe in that one thing suits all is never the case. And even the simplest mantra, most popular mantra, if it is not suiting you, you are not supposed to do it. The result is not easily felt. Coming quickly to my point. For this whole purpose, you have to take your name, the Rashi where your name falls and the Nakshatra where your name falls. Right? The name is of utmost important. It has nothing to do with the horoscope. I have written an article before by the name of Mantra Suitability. You can just go to internet and search Mantra Suitability by Shubham Alok. You will access to this article which I have written on August 18, 2017. <coughs> Sorry. In this article, I have given methods to check the suitability of the mantra and I have also written how these things are to be used. I will explain it. Suppose I want to chant Namah Shivaya. My name is Shubham. First of all, I have to check this Kulakul or family chakra. In this chakra, it is written that the first letter of your name and mantra should fall in the same group. That is the most accepted case. Otherwise, it should fall in the friends group, then it can also be accepted, but it should never be in the enemy group or neither in the neutral group. So my name is Shubham that starts from the letter Sh, which comes in the Akash Tattva, that is the first letter of my name. And the first letter of the mantra Namah Shivaya will be Na, Na Maha, Na. And the letter Na also falls under the same category of Akash Tattva, either element. Hence, my name Shubham and the first letter of the mantra Namah Shivai Na, they fall in the same Akash element in the Kulakul Chakra. Hence, I can chant this mantra. Going further to the second list, this is the list of the zodiac. Every Rashi have, the, have a particular letter. Once again, this is the same thing. I, you have, I have to take the first letter of my name, that is Sha, which falls under Virgo. Sha, Virgo, Sha. And the letter, the first letter of the mantra Namah Shivaya is Na, which falls under Capricorn. Now the counting has to be done from the Rashi where the name falls. My name falls in Virgo and the first letter of the mantra falls in Capricorn. It is five, nine to each other from Virgo where my name falls the mantra will fall in the fifth sign Capricorn. Hence, I can do this mantra. I cannot do those mantras which fall in a Rashi, which falls in fourth, sixth, eighth, twelfth from the Rashi where my name falls. Okay, so this Rashi Chakra also tells me that I can chant the mantra. Then you come to the Nakshatra or the Constellation Chakra. Going through this constellation chakra, you will see that the first letter of my name, Sha, comes under Purva Bhadra. And the first letter of the mantra, Namah Shivaya, Na, comes under Mula. 
you have to use navatara chakra to find the name is suitable or not i have written how to find it below right the first 10th and 19th nakshatra is janmatara second 11th and 20th nakshatra falls under sampattara third 12th and 21st nakshatra falls under vipattara fourth 13th and 22nd nakshatra falls under chhemtara fifth 14th and 23rd nakshatra falls under pratritara sixth 15th 24th nakshatra falls under sadaktara seventh 16th 25th nakshatra falls under vadhatara 8th 17th 26th nakshatra falls under mitra tara and 9th 18th and 27th nakshatra falls under param mitra tara out of all these taras the vipat tara 3rd 12th 21st or the vipat star pratri star the 5th 14th and the 23rd nakshatra and the vadh star 7th 16th and 25th nakshatra cannot be taken from the above above nakshatra list we find that my name my name comes under purva bhadra Starting from Purva Bhadra, Purva Bhadra, first Nakshatra, Uttara Bhadra, second Rayuti, third Ashwini, fourth Bharani, fifth Kritika, sixth Rohini, seventh Bhagashira, eighth Adra, ninth Punarvasu, tenth Pushya, eleventh Asulesha, twelfth Magha, thirteen Purva Falguni, fourteen Uttara Falguni, fifteen Hasta, sixteen Kitra, seventeen Swati, eighteen Vishaka, nineteen Anuradha, twenty Jeshta, twenty-one and Mula, twenty-two. Because the first letter of the name. the first letter of the mantra namah shivaya falls under na which falls under mula nakshatra which is actually 22nd from my from the nakshatra purva bhadra where my name falls i have to go to this particular list and when i refer to this list i find that the 22nd nakshatra is a chhem tara which indicates well being for the native well being for the person which means i can chant this mantra namah shivaya it is suitable to my name as per the nakshatra chakra or the constellation star also sorry nakshatra chakra or the constellation chakra as well right i will repeat once again any any uh, first letter of the mantra if it is falling in the 3rd 12th or 21st nakshatra from your Name Nakshatra, which is Vipat Tara, fifth, fourteenth, or twenty-third from your name Nakshatra, that is Pratri Tara, or seventh, sixteenth, or twenty-fifth from your name Nakshatra, which is Vada Tara. Those mantras should not be chanted at all. Now going further, this is this Clan Bodhak Chakra or Gana Bodhak Chakra or the Clan Indicating Chakra. From this list, I have to make sure that my first letter of my name and the first letter of the mantra falls in the same uh group my name is shubham just a second my name is shubham and when you check this list the letter sh or shu the first letter of my name comes here shoe right this is another shoe this is not that particular shoe that comes in my name but it is the closest possible closest possible letter that i get in my name and this is shoe shubham that comes in the rakshas or the demon clan the nakshatra sorry the first letter of the mantra namah shivaya the first letter is na and when you go to the table you find that the na the letter comes under the deva or the god clan so my clan is rakshas demon and the clan of the mantra is god right and according to the suggestion if the first letter of my name is human then i should only do the human mantra if the first letter of the name falls under the deva clan then i should only do deva mantra and if my name falls under Uh, rakshas then i should only do the rakshas mantras right and also because my name the first letter of my name falls under the rakshas category i can only do the rakshas mantras the first letter of the mantra namah shivaya na comes under deva category it is in a different category hence i should not be chanting it now if you see this closely this is the fourth chakra that i am consulting the first one is kulakula chakra the second is rashi chakra the third is nakshatra chakra 
and the fourth is gana chakra this clan indicating chakra now out of these four chakras only one is negative other three are not negative hence i can ignore the conclusion that is found from this clan indicating chakra and can still proceed further i will tell you in the end about which table can be ignored the next is the akadama chakra and there are two there is one akadama chakra the first one and another is akathaha chakra the second one out of these two chakras the akadama chakra and akathaha chakra the first chakra akadama chakra have to be used the counting is from in the south direction so first is siddha second is sadhya third is susitta and the fourth is ari first is best second is medium third is best and fourth is prohibited the calculation you have to uh, watch this very carefully the first letter of my name is sh my name is shubham and that letter sh comes under this category sadhya category the first letter of the mantra namah shivaya is na which falls here from sh the na is in the third category right the first category is best second is medium third is best fourth is prohibited now my name falls in sh so for me all the na all the letters falling in this table is giving giving result like the first table best all the names falling in this susiddha table is giving result like the second table which is medium and all the letters in this third table is giving result like the third set best right so for me because my name the first letter of my name shubham falls under the sadhya category and the first letter of the mantra namah shivaya na falls in third from this sadhya category it will not work as ari or the and, and the mantra will not be prohibited but rather because it is third from my name it will take the nature of the third division of the akadam chakra and instead of the mantra being prohibited the mantra will become best right so for clear understanding in hindi those who don't understand i think english speaking people have understood it well for hindi speaking people i have to explain it a bit more in depth i feel so for that reason you have to understand ki mera naam shubham ka sh yahan par aata hai to ye waise dusra khana hai dusri category hai but dusri category hone ke bawajood bhi जहां से मेरा नाम आ रहा है वहां से गिनती शुरू करनी है गिनती का फंडामेंटल यह है कि पहला बेस्ट है दूसरा मीडियम है तीसरा बेस्ट है चौथा प्रोहिबिटेड तो मेरे नाम से तीसरे खाने में नक्ष ये मंत्र का पहला अक्षर न आता है और तीसरा खाना सुसिद्ध या बेस्ट होने वाला है इस वजह से इसको सुसिद्ध लेंगे रीड लेकर के नहीं चलेंगे वॉट आई सेट इज बिकॉज माई नेम फॉल्स इन right so this is this this is uh, based on these boxes right the sets so uh, starting starting the calculation from the box where your name falls and uh, that should be treated as the first box and because the first letter of the mantra falls in the third box rather than the third box being prohibited it will take the category of it will take the nature of the third box and it will be best for my name right so this uh, this akadam chakra have to be made personalized for every person and out of these two chakras that i have given i recommend to using the first akadam chakra and not using the second akadam chakra this is the last table credited debitor chakra which have to be used this chakra how to use it this i have to explain find the number of vowels and consonants in your name add them 
divide the total by 8 and take the remainder then find numbers of vowels and consonants in the mantra add them and divide by 8 take the remainder same as you did for your name if the remainder of mantra is more than the remainder of your name then he is your debater which means you have already done the mantra in the previous life and you haven't reaped its fruit hence if you do the mantra in this life it will give you quick result if the remainder of the mantra is less than remainder of your name then he then the uh, mantra is your creditor which means you in previous life a guru gave you this particular mantra and you haven't completed the chanting of this mantra right hence first of all you have to chant this mantra to pay the debt of the previous life and only then the mantra will start giving result if the remainder of the mantra is equal to the remainder of your name then it is neither creditor nor debtor and you can either choose or not to choose the mantra you can either choose to do or not to not choose to do the mantra it depends on you to give you an example my name is shubham and the mantra is namah shivaya the letter sh yeah the letter sh if you see this particular table falls here which have a value of 0 the letter bh falls under this table uh, this section which have the value of 2 and the letter m falls under this last table which have the value of 5 now the first letter falls under this box having the value of 4 m falls under this uh, box having the value of 5 sure once again falls under this first box having the value of 0 v falls under this box having the value of 1 and y <clears throat> falls under this first box itself having the value of 0 now i have to add all of this together divide by 8 and take the remainder 5 plus 2 will be 7 the number is lesser than 8 the addition is less than 8 hence it should not be divided the total of the mantra is 45010 we have to add add sorry we have to add all of these numbers separately sorry four plus five plus one the answer will be 10 it have to be divided by 8 and the remainder should be taken 8 one ja 8 the remainder will be 2 the remainder for my name is 7 and the remainder for the mantra is 2 so the remainder of the mantra is less than the remainder of my name that means the mantra is my creditor and in the in a previous life a guru have given me this mantra which i haven't completed the chanting but used the blessings of the mantra hence in this life first i should chant this mantra to pay the debt of previous life only then this mantra will start work for me this is the complete compatibility process now there is one very particular thing the first kulakul family chakra is to be used not very necessary the rashi chakra and the nakshatra chakra should be primarily used to check if the mantra is suitable to you or not the clan indicating chakra you can also ignore out of this akadam chakra and akakha chakra akadam chakra is to be used 
very essential but the akadam chakra doesn't decide the suitability rather it decides whether the mantra is good for you medium for you or prohibited for you and lastly you have to use this rinadana chakra creditor debater chakra which tells you whether the mantra will give you quick result or first you have to chant the mantra for some time and only after that the mantra will start giving you the result right so these are the two things which these are the uh, four five tools i think five six tools that you have to use with every mantra and after using it you have to check whether a mantra is suitable to you or not whether a mantra is suiting you or not and only after checking the suitability of the mantra you should start doing any mantra you should never do a mantra which is not suitable to you because in that case <clears throat> the result of the mantra either may not be felt or while doing the mantra sadhana you may face many obstacles difficulties etc not being able to complete the sadhana in that scenario because you have started the sadhana and have not been able to complete it you will incur bad karma and rather than give you a relief the mantra will start giving problems only this is my uh, that's it this is my small presentation for upcoming shivratri what to be done in the shivratri or not for that i have written an article on my website you just go to my website shubhamalok.com when the website opens up you go to the blog section and in that blog section you will find on top i have written an article by the name of shiva the benefactor god i will also drop the link of this article in the description section of the video here you will find a here you will find some discussion about remedies then i have given many mantras of shiva you can choose any of these mantras then find if this mantra is suitable to you or not and then you can start chanting after finding the suitability you will find many of these mantras more than one of these mantras are suitable to you in that scenario i have written which mantra gives you what result so according to the result also then you can further segregate which particular mantra you want to do after that i have also written the method for doing the mantra japa so that you have to that you have to particularly follow after that i have given the dhyana mantras or meditation mantras or the meditation couplets on all the five phases of shiva and i have also written you know what these five phases indicate and what these five phases give you and i have also written a very rare thing the invocation mantra for the mother goddess parvati or gauri who is the spouse of shiva so this is a very beautiful article dealing with many of the topics many secrets uh, and many things which i am pretty sure you don't know i have discussed about in this particular article so go and have a look at that article wishing you a happy shivratri have a happy and beautiful life and uh, please drop a comment on the video if you want me to make more videos on this particular aspect of you know how to worship how to do sadhana if you want me to make more videos on this topic please comment below thank you for watching the video have a nice day